Hey friends, my name is Doug Goodrich with Goodrich Aviation and Custom Aircraft Builders. And if you're watching the channel, you know I've been talking with some different builders here in our build center, um, asking some questions, stuff, letting you get to know them and, and how they got to this point of, uh, of building a, uh, a sling. And uh, so this is Joe McLaughlin, and uh, you are basically from Massachusetts, but also South Carolina. You're back and forth a lot. Um, and uh, so, uh, so tell us how you kind of got to into flying, first of all, because you kind of have an interesting uh, story how you got into aviation. Sure. Uh, yeah, thanks, Doug. Um, fortunate to have purchased a property in South Carolina in 2016. Um, and after making a bunch of commercial trips, it started dawning on me how much more convenient it would be if I could fly myself back and forth. And, you know, so that prompted me probably around 2017 to start uh, looking into what it took to become a pilot. And I actually, once I decided that I wanted to go that route, I started looking at the aircraft first. And the biggest thing I noticed is that most of the aircraft in my price range and my capability range was about as old as I am. Uh, <laughs> and I'm kind of a tech guy. Uh, I like gadgets and, and mm -hmm. modern technology. And so one of my friends turned me on to the idea of experimental aircraft. Um, and one, yeah. one of the aircraft that caught my attention early on as far as my mission, which is a little over 700 miles of flying between the two destinations, was the RV-10. Mm -hmm. And so you start doing homework on the RV-10 yeah. and you start to find these articles and videos of RV-10 versus this aircraft and that aircraft. Um, sure. And that search led me to discover what was the Sling 4 at the time. Yep. Uh, and so as I was doing my research on the Sling 4, I had come up with uh, that was a plane that fit the mission, as well as the RV-10, obviously, and then the Velocity. Um, mm -hmm. And it was probably, I think, about 2018 when Sling released the TSI that yep. I started saying, you know, with the improved capabilities and um, all the, you know, the added performance and... Uh, the better Bigger technology, engine, yep. yeah, everything that uh, that came with that TSI package at the time, it really honed me in on this aircraft. Yep, and so um, so just a quick overview, of your learn to fly experience, because it was right in the middle of COVID, right? <laughs> uh, actually, my wife got me a Discovery flight for, as a Christmas present, uh, December 2019, did my Discovery <laughs> flight in January of 2020, and uh, I think I got one lesson in, in February before the airport in Massachusetts shut down. Coincidentally, it was uh, the first week of March, second week of March, came to South Carolina to do college tours for my son. We left on March 12th, everything was still on. We got to South Carolina March 13th, everything was canceled, everything was shut down. Yeah. I called the flight school in Aiken, and the guy said, yeah, we'll clean the airplane, uh, you know, yeah. before and after, if you wanna fly, happy to take you up. So I, I did a couple of flights with him, and then it got to the point that we were flying some days three times a day. I'd go fly first thing in the morning before work. I'd take a lunch break and go fly for an hour, an hour and a half, and then fly again at the end of the day. Completed all my private pilot um, requirements in seven weeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so COVID was an advantage to you because there was a, nobody else flying. It was, yeah, yeah. The plane was available all the yeah. time. The guy was happy to fly with me. Yeah. You know, we obviously yeah. made sure everything was clean and used the protocols and everything. Um, and then I had to wait for a test center to open. So mm -hmm. I, uh, at mm -hmm. that point, I just continued to practice the maneuvers and uh, expand my capabilities and my experience. Took my written test in June, <clears throat> did my practical test the first week of August, and um, found an airplane in July, uh, the Bristol Light Sport that yep. I currently fly. So this isn't going to be your first airplane? Not my first airplane and not my first Rotax. Uh, okay. And I will say getting yep. the Bristol, because uh, I had not committed to purchasing a sling at that point. I think I was kind of between the sling and the velocity actually. Mm -hmm. um, and then I was watching some of those early builds go on. I was like, okay, getting used to the process, kind of exploring uh, folks like um, Mike Ojo and Evan Brunier, who were um, putting out on YouTube uh, their builds. So I was watching that very, very intently. Um, and then the more I gained experience with the Rotax, I realized that, okay, this is a far more modern engine, you know, very easy to fly with. Um, the capabilities and the and the way the Bristol flies very similar to how the, the sling flies. So once I had the experience in the Bristol, it really cemented the decision to move forward with the TSI. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, you know this is obviously his airplane here that we're sitting next to, and uh, we'll show a little clip probably at the end of uh, you and Matt putting this on uh, the airplane today. So tell us about this. Yeah, 916, uh, just really great timing, I think, with uh, you know, the timing of me meeting you, ordering my kit. Um, right as we were about to place the engine order, uh, we 
you know, 916 had just been released, I think, uh, or announced to the public, I should say, maybe mm -hmm. a month or two prior to that. Um, and you managed to find one that was available. And yeah. when I looked at it, you know, the increased performance obviously is nice to have, uh, especially for uh, the takeoff performance. And um, when I listened to the webinar uh, that the Rotax folks did announcing the 916 and all of its capabilities, uh, between the 2,000 hour TBO and uh, my understanding is about 20% more efficient uh, at cruise when it comes to fuel burn. Uh, again, just really solidified the decision that, okay, yeah, I realize I got to spend a little bit more up front, but on a, you know, per hour and then the reduced operating costs, uh, you know, long term, because I do plan to own this plane for as long as I can fly. Mm -hmm. um, it just made economic sense to me to make that investment up front yeah and you're going to fly a fair amount a year is what you're planning too absolutely yeah, yeah. i mean i plan to make a lot of trips back and forth between yep. south carolina and yep. you're not going to be one of those guys that like like a lot of my customers bring me their planes for an annual inspection and they have 30 hours or 50 hours or something like that on them on a good year <laughs> right no so. even my bristel i've uh, had the bristel for over three years now and I'm averaging almost 150 hours a year in that, mm -hmm. um, and that's without even taking it back and forth to South Carolina. Yep. yep. So one of the interesting things with my business is I get to work with a lot of uh, different people that have different backgrounds. And like we have Matodi over over there, and he's a kind of controls and electrical engineer, and so he brings a lot of that experience. With Joe, he's a financial guy, and uh, everything is uh, a cost benefit <laughs> analysis. And so it's been interesting to to learn because because uh, Joe he crunches the numbers on all of these things. So. For all of these options, like the 916 and stuff, you you basically just crunched the numbers and said, "Gee, that makes sense." Yeah, to for, me, uh, for 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 you. Yeah. yeah, again, you know, performance gains obviously nice to have. I consider that a bonus. But just looking at the cost of the engine, looking at uh, the 2,000 hour TBO versus the 1,200 hour TBO for the 915, it it just made economic sense to yep. do it. Yep. All right, and you're going with the MT propeller. Yes. Yep. You were one of the. Uh, Matodi was our first adopter of that. In fact, he introduced us to the MT propeller. I didn't even know they, they were, uh, no, he needed it out of necessity because he wanted a, uh, 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 a 750 in his panel and he needed to get rid of the, um, the controller. You just wanted the FADEC and, and stuff like that. And the, um, and, and plus you needed that too, um, because it, there's, there wasn't, there's not an Airmaster option for you. We needed to go to the, to the MT propeller, uh, for the 916. Um, so that was, it was kind of out of necessity. Now you have the, the smaller diameter, mm -hmm. um, cause that's really what was available at the, uh, at the time you placed the order. Now we've got a, a couple of options with that. So we'll see, we'll, uh, we'll run the numbers, uh, with that and see how the, uh, the, the performance of that is. Um, and, uh, just the, the, the ground clearance, um, is significantly better with the MT propeller by was like a, almost an inch and a quarter or something like that yeah, inch and uh, half versus half the was. Airmaster. Yeah. So, um, so you'll have plenty of, uh, of, uh, of, of space there. We were wondering, we hadn't really looked at that before, but, uh, that was kind of interesting to, to see the, uh, the, the differences there. So, um, so let's talk a little bit more about the, uh, the airplane avionics. What'd you do? Yeah, full Garmin IFR suite, mm -hmm. uh, dual G3X 650 navigation. Yep. Um, what is it, the, the 500 autopilot uh, yep. in, in there as well? Yep. Uh, yep. Went with the autoglide and ballistic parachute, uh, yep. obviously beyond the avionics, but uh, for the safety of the aircraft. Mm -hmm. um, so kind of putting all the pieces together, I wanted to make sure that I had, uh, obviously, a very cross-country capable airplane working on my instrument rating right now, uh, as we've discussed. And uh, you just want to make sure that I took advantage. That's one of the things I like about the TSI packages. You have so many options of what you can do. So as I was going through and making my decisions, it was about uh, you know, obviously optimizing the uh, economics and the cost benefit <laughs> analysis, but really understanding what my mission is, which, you know, the primary mission is to go back and forth from the Northeast to the Southeast. Uh, but also as I look you know, beyond my current state and into retirement, the places that my wife and I want to be able to travel in the plane. I want to make sure that I had a, a very, very capable aircraft to go different places uh, in different conditions. Uh, and Garmin Autoglide, ballistic parachute yep. for safety uh, factors and, and those sorts of things. So um, yep. just really happy with the way that we've been able to customize the package for exactly what I need for my mission uh, and, and for my mm -hmm. comfort. Yep. And uh, yeah, you've also got the, um, the non-built-in oxygen system. Correct. Uh, that, yeah, that's part system. of the, yep, the portable system. All right. So um, yeah, so that's uh, going to be a fun part of all of this. 
Um, so you got a sling interior, mm -hmm. um, gray, and uh, a couple of tones of gray, uh, kind of standard thing. But the one thing that, uh, <laughs> that that you brought to me is you you have a color that you want on your airplane. Yeah, very interesting. I'm. I, my wife says that I'm setting my ways at times, and <laughs> as I was going through the process, regardless of which aircraft I was going to build, I had a color scheme in mind, and really mm -hmm. uh, two colors in particular, and then a third accent color. Um, I really, really love that Dodge Destroyer gray that you see on the, the Dodge products uh, and the Jeeps. I just think that's just a very, very slick base color. Um, and then with my uh, off-road motorcycle racing background, I'm pretty fond of the Gas Gas motorcycle brand. And the, the red color that they use for that frame, I actually went to the dealer and asked them. I said, I need that paint coat because I want to use that yeah. on my plane. It's just, it's a very sexy red color. It's like, um, it just really, really grabs you. It's kind of like that Italian sports car uh, color to me. So I wanted to make sure that I had uh, those two exact colors in the plane. And I also, I wanted a paint scheme that was just very different. Um, I like something that like has a really nice look to it, you know, like that red color with the sectionness. So kind of uh, concentric circles between unique and interesting, but not like over the top. Um, and I tend to prefer more straight lines yeah, than like swirly curves. Yep. Yeah, so I, I like the way that uh, Evoke Aviation designed the scheme. Yep. You know, we probably went through at least a dozen or 15 iterations before we yeah, settled sure. on the final design. And obviously you were very helpful making sure the lines fit uh, with the yeah. airframe and the yeah. things that we, that we have to work around uh, with the build and everything. But I, once I saw them put that yeah. scheme together for me with the lines that I like and the colors that I like, I definitely was sold on it. Yeah. Yeah. Yours is a, a lot straighter than some of the others with big curves and things like that, that, um, that we've done. So yeah, that'll be uh, that'll be a fun paint scheme to uh to lay out and uh yeah we have joe's mask here already so when uh when, it, when he's uh when the plane's ready to paint we're ready to uh to, to get at it so all right um yeah so that's uh that's basically a good overview of uh of joe's tsi and uh, getting the chance to uh to meet joe I um, appreciate you watching this video, and if you haven't yet, appreciate if you could hit that uh, like button and subscribe to our channel. It certainly helps us out, and we will see you on the next video. Thanks.